Hello, Taryn. Welcome back to Cozy Conversations. <laughs> Hi, Sarah. It's, it's good to see like, your face. It's good to see yours, too. It's not like we're FaceTiming right now for a couple hours. I know. <laughs> but anyways, this is an exciting episode because this is, we decided that um, we're going to kind of introduce ourselves, you know, as the hosts of this podcast. Um, yeah. So today is all about Taryn. Um, she doesn't know like any questions I'm gonna ask her no I'm they're all su- <laughs> you should be no, I'm uh, uh, so they're all a surprise to her but just in, as a way for our listeners to get to know you and yes. to just kind of learn more about you and then next week um we'll kind of flip roles here uh-huh. um so Sarah. so be careful the questions you ask me this week because they're coming your way next week oh my so fierce. I'm kidding. Um, I know. You're, you're funny. Yeah. <laughs> Not um, as funny as you. That's a fact. That is. So, we all, everyone knows that. <laughs> anyways, but we are both equally awkward. So that is true. <laughs> this is, yeah. We just roll with it. You know, I was telling someone the other day, it's like, you know, life is just going to bring moments of awkwardness and you just got to learn to like, to roll with it. You yeah. Know, just go with it. And laugh at yourself, which we spend a lot of our time doing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Every day I laugh about, about myself. Yeah. I laugh. <laughs> yeah. Um, But let's just go ahead and start off. Um, The way I kind of thought we would do this mm-hmm. is that like, the questions we normally ask mm-hmm. um, during each episode, like what has the Lord been teaching you? Um, what books, movies, TV shows? Like you'll just answer those today. Okay. Um, and then next week I'll answer. Sounds great. Uh, for that. So literally this show is about you today. Nah. Tim. And I'm your host, Sarah Baylor. <laughs> Do you live? No, not actually live. That's not true. No. Um. Anyways, so... First and foremost, Taryn, what has the Lord been teaching you this past week? Okay, so um, I was thinking about what to share, and I actually kind of have um, two things, if that's okay. Oh, yes. So um, I've been spending a lot of, we know, I've said this every week, spending a lot of time in Psalms. Um, that's awesome. And, yeah, and, um, you know, the first thing kind of that... Um, I was reading Psalm 119 and I read 80 verses 81 to 82 this week. Um, I read more than that this week, but I (laughs) specifically read those two. And it says, um, my soul languishes for your salvation. I wait for your word. My eyes fail with longing for your word while I say, when will you comfort me? And, you know, these verses just stuck out to me because, um, I, and then I'll go ahead and read verse 88 says, revive me according to your loving kindness so that I may keep the testimony of your mouth. And I just, um, these were kind of touching for me because I've been kind of going through a difficult time the last couple years. And, um, you know, I don't know if anyone else can relate to this, but a lot of times when you're going through a difficult time, it's like, it's never just one thing that happens. Like there's always multiple things that happen concurrently together all at one time. And, um, and then it's like little things happen, but because you're dealing with something bigger, the little things are harder to deal with and they're harder for you to cope with and things. And Mm -hmm. so, um, that's kind of where I've been and I don't want to, there are people that have it so, so much worse than I do. So, um, this is not me having a pity party, but, um, it's just this, this, these verses spoke to me because, um, just thinking about how the Lord, sometimes I feel like the Lord just keeps giving me one thing on top of another. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I start to feel like I like, Lord, like I'm getting so tired of this. Like I can't keep handling all of this and keeping it under control. And I just feel like I can't really take something else that even just something little is going to send me like over the edge. And the Lord's like, but Taryn, that's the point. Like the point is that I am the one who sustains you and Mm -hmm. I am the one who comforts you. And I am the one who meets you at that place where you are. You don't have to try and keep everything together because I'm the one who's supposed to be doing that for you. And, um, I tend to forget that every single day, but he continually reminds me about that, that, you know, it's like my strength needs to come from him Mm -hmm. and 
he is the one who can, um, who can sustain me through whatever my day brings. And, um, so these verses were really <clears throat> sweet to me and, um, just praying for the Lord and just turning to him in those moments of struggling. And then mm -hmm. along with that, um, a lot of times I feel like, you know, I can start to use what I'm going through as an excuse to feel sorry for myself or to, and it's very important to validate your, you know, how you're feeling and, and deal mm -hmm. with those things and bring them to the Lord. But sometimes it can be an excuse to just have kind of a pity party and um, complain about things or feel sorry for yourself. And um, <clears throat> so verse 80, before we get to verses 81, through 88 in Psalm 119 says, may my heart be blameless in your statutes that I may not be ashamed. And so he was just really convicting me of like, you know, what I'm going through, isn't it an excuse for me to turn my heart away from him? And it's not an excuse for me to, um, to sin or to give in to temptations or whatever it might be. Like there is no excuse for my heart not to be blameless before him. And so continually asking the Lord to, um, just purify my heart. And, um, I love praying Psalm 51. It like created me a clean heart. Mm -hmm. Oh God. And renew a steadfast yeah. spirit within me. And just that whole Psalm is beautiful to pray. And so, um, just a reminder to me to strive to be blameless before him in mm -hmm. whatever circumstance I'm in. And he is the only one that can help me do that. And so that yeah. means I have to continually rely on him and his, and his presence. Um, yeah. So, yeah, that's awesome, Taryn. Thanks for sharing. Um, and I just also wanted to ask just in terms of like the nature of today's episode. So what's your favorite Bible verse? Oh, I have so many Bible verses that I like. <laughs> you have to choose okay. one. Okay. Um, so the probably Proverbs. No. <laughs> <laughs> I love Proverbs three, five through six. Um, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. And you I think he stole mine. Thank you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's a great yeah. one. I love it. I just, I love it because I've seen it come true so yes. many times in my life. Yeah. Like I've lived this verse and I continue. Oh, yeah. So yeah. That's it. how I feel about it too. Yeah. Like, trust yeah. in the Lord. Like it's not just something you can like say one day and like, boom, you trust him forever. Right, right. No, like every day, every day, every hour, you have to like remind yeah. yourself to trust in him. So, yeah. And yeah. like every time I've had like a big decision to make, I always, <clears throat> you know, go to the Lord first and like, yeah, just ask him to guide me and beg him for his just wisdom. And every single time, like he just sometimes it's down to the very last second, but every single time he makes it extremely clear what I'm yeah. supposed to do. And so like. Yeah, I just love that. I think it's a testament to this verse. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. yeah. So kind of kicking off more of like the formal question interviewing time. Tell us about yourself. That's actually the worst interview question. Like I've interviewed a few times. Yes. For, like, different jobs, <laughs> and it's the worst thing when you're when you have like a few pairs of eyes like staring at you and they're like yeah. hey, tell us about yourself and I'm like okay do you want my testimony do you want what I ate for breakfast this morning like so let me do it to you tell us about yourself okay <laughs> I'm scared um no. uh okay so I, I mentioned several things in the first yeah in the first episode I think we did but um so I grew up in Nebraska yay me um and yeah <laughs> and um I love it here wide open spaces um I mean I kind of told my but in case anyone missed the first episode I'll just kind of go and if you miss the first episode please go back and listen to it <laughs> but also if yes. you want <laughs> <laughs> yes I grew up I have um fantastic parents and um a younger brother and we had a sweet little dog for a long time oh, um yeah so and then sweet. I know sweetie. yeah that was her name sweetie um I miss her very much sometimes I just wake up in the middle of the night thinking about her and it makes me sad Karen <laughs> but, that makes um, me sad too <laughs> moving on um so <laughs> yeah and, uh, I'm very um close with my grandparents I have both sets of grandparents still living and that's a huge mm -hmm. blessing so I try to spend as much time with them as I can um and then so grew up basically had a dream childhood I'm not gonna lie 
Um, yeah. was very, very blessed by that. And then, um, became a Christian when I was two years old. Um, very little, but, um, I, d- I understood what I was doing and I knew I needed the Lord and he has continued to grow me and just, um, shaped me and called me into ministry when I was in high school. And, um, I worked at a church here in Omaha for a year before going to Liberty where mm-hmm. I had the best time of my life so far and, um, made amazing friends. And, um, then, graduated and worked. Um, I did the first year of my master's at Liberty as well. And then I transitioned to doing my master's online and I moved to Memphis, Tennessee and worked at Bellevue Baptist church for an amazing year. Um, and I, um, actually got sick with a chronic illness while I was at Bellevue. And, um, that was a very difficult time. And, um, still have a lot of questions about why that happened the way it did, but I got sick to the point I had to move back home to Nebraska, which was heartbreaking um, to leave my job and everyone I love there. But um, the Lord has confirmed that his hand is still on my life. And um, I know he is still in control, even in the hard moments. And I work at I, he provided in his perfect timing, right when I needed it, he provided um, a part-time job here at a church in, um, in Bellevue, Nebraska. Um, (laughs) and so, um, I look there now. Bellevue. The theme is Bellevue, (laughs) the theme of my life, apparently. (laughs) God's like, go to Bellevue. Okay, Lord, going. Wrong one. (laughs) I know. (laughs) I know. So, um, but the Lord has just used all of that. This is not where I thought I would be in my life at this point. I am very limited with what I can do physically. Um, compared to what I was able to do before. Um, but I'm very thankful for the, I'm in the process of recovering, um, right now from, I have, um, post COVID syndrome. So, um, it's been a very long road, but I am trying my best to recover from that. And the Lord has just been good. And he's been with me every step of the way, even though I'm not going to lie and say that it has been easy the past couple of years, because it hasn't been, but there's so many times I can look back and just see his hand and, and through the people he's placed in my life. Um, and so he's really grown me a lot the last couple years, um, in a way I didn't expect, but, um, yeah, yeah, he's definitely the one constant in, in my life for sure. When everything else can be changing. So, yeah. Yeah. Thank you for sharing turn now to make it a little bit easier on you. What's your favorite color? Ah, I know pink. the answer to this question. <laughs> there it is. I love pink so much. <laughs> Literally so much. So like our dorm, half of it was pink. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And the My other half. half was like blue and like. I know. Some pink. Normal colors. A little pink. Yeah. Pink is not. Pink is normal. Yes, it is. That's true. But yeah, pink is your favorite color. It we is. all knew that. Yeah. Um, what's your favorite season? Oh, Sarah. I have to choose one. <laughs> Probably Christmas. <laughs> so winter? No, Christmas. <laughs> no, okay. Season, probably summer. Summer, okay. Yeah, season. Yeah. If Christmas can't be a season. And then I mean, you know, question. working at churches, Christmas starts in July. So Christmas That's runs true. July through December. So <laughs> probably like January 1st. Yeah, that too. So, exactly. So, what's your favorite holiday? <laughs> that would be Christmas. <laughs> yeah, Christmas. Yeah. That's fun. Um. So we always ask this question on the podcast, but can you tell us about any books, movies, shows, recipes? Any just catch us up with where you're at in your little life right now. <laughs> um, I am still reading the book I talked about last time. But I have gotten farther into it. Um, it's called Deep Extraction and by Diane Mills. And I'm really loving it. It's really good. They kind of did a little twist pretty early on. So I like That's that. Fun. I won't spoil it. But um, yeah, I didn't have as much time to read this week, sadly. But I am reading that. And then um, I haven't watched any really new good shows lately. But I did watch um, a movie, <clears throat> a Hallmark movie the other night. It was about this um hired bridesmaid oh like I've a heard profession- about this. yeah a professional bridesmaid and she like had to go to this wedding and like 
she was like, but like, couldn't, no one could know that she was a hired bridesmaid, mm. like a professional one. And I just think it's so funny that that's a thing. Well, there's the, the one Hallmark movie, I think it's Hallmark from like years ago, uh-huh. where the bride hires like an undercover, I think the movie is called Undercover Bridesmaid. Yes, but that one's like, funny. <laughs> I love that one so much. She's like, um, like, like not a F- detective or maybe yeah. FBI, I'm not sure. But she's like, because the, the bride thinks that, like, someone's trying to sabotage the wedding. Yes. She I hires her to, like, one. find. And then she ends up falling in love with, like, I don't remember who. I'm going to assume the best man. Yeah. It's very um, rom com yeah, yeah. It's cute. Yeah. It's a good one. Um, yes. But that's kind of, like, that vibe. But yes. Maybe, let me guess, like, the main character falls in love with one of the groomsmen. He's actually a newspaper reporter. Oh, I did not see that coming. But okay, um, <laughs> so she's she's being a professional bridesmaid for like this government somebody's daughter. Oh. So like there's like he's like the press is like really big on the wedding and like mm. trying to find bad press for it and stuff. And so then she ends up being the liaison to this newspaper reporter and like, yeah, falls in love with him. But That's cute. Yeah. Who played the main character? I don't remember. They weren't people I'm super familiar with, but they were uh, really, they were really good. Yeah, they cool. did a good job. Yeah, they were yeah. kind of their new actors. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. I haven't watched a Hallmark movie in a long time or a GAC Great American Channel movie. I feel like Hallmarks have gone downhill. Yeah, they have, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. Just with um some yeah. stuff they include now, but... Yeah. And even um, their plots aren't great anymore. Really? That's, yeah, and the acting. I mean, not like good. people are probably like their plots. But, yeah, to <laughs> never regret, but, but I feel like you can gotten worse. find <laughs> that one that's like really good. Like yeah. remember the one? I don't know if it's technically Hallmark, but they would play it on Hallmark a lot. We watched it in the dorm together back in the day. Uh-huh. Um, after all these years, where the lady and her husband are celebrating their anniversary. And then some, and then they, but they're planning on getting a divorce. Yeah. And then somebody murders him, I think. Yeah. And so she goes like, oh yeah, she goes on the run because yes. police think it's her. That's right. The murderer, obviously. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. statistically <laughs> speaking. <Right>. There's, <laughs> totally off topic, but there's like this video I found on like Instagram, uh-huh. like Instagram reel, where the maid of honor is giving a speech of, at the wedding, and she goes, "Just turn and look at each other right now." She says to the bride and groom, "I've seen this. Just look into each other's <laughs> eyes. You are looking in the eyes of the person who is most statistically most likely to murder you." And everyone starts <laughs> laughing. So back to the homework movie. So she goes on the run to like try to find who like murdered yes. her husband. Um, and yeah, that was a funny one, but yeah. It was. So I feel really like they funny. have like you got to find the ones that are like good. Yeah. Like the how to fall in love. Yes, that's with, really good. I can picture Dorsey is her last yeah. name. Yeah. Uh-huh. Brooke other, Dorsey. Like, Brooke Dorsey. Yeah. And I can picture him. Oh, he's the guy from Sign Sealed Delivered. Yeah. The, What's his name? I don't remember. I literally we just watched a Sign Sealed Delivered. Oh, I should talk about that. We just watched that last night or the Those night. Those are before. good. Like a They're newer really good. Really no, we one. just rewatched some old episodes. Highly They're recommend so that show. They are so yeah. good. They That's might be one of the best show. things Hallmark has put out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. It has everything in that show. It's got like the mystery. Yeah. The drama, the yeah. romance. The strong faith aspect. Quirkiness. Quirkiness. Yeah, yeah. faith uh-huh. aspect. Yeah, those ones are cute. I know his name in the show is Shane. No, no, that's no, the girl's it, name. Yeah. Um. Why am I oh, blinking? Oh, something. It's um. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really curious now. So if you find it. Yeah. But that movie, How to Fall in Love, is really cute because she, the girl, is looking for a job. Yes. And. Um, Oliver is his name. Oliver. Oh, yeah. Oh, tool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's his name from the show. And his his name is Eric Mabius. Mabius? Yes. Yeah. Mabius. Maybe? Yeah. Maybe? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, the um, How to Fall in Love, that one's really cute. That one's really cute because then he hired, he's kind of a nerd, but then yeah. he hires her to like teach him how to like 
you know, be able to like talk to women. <laughs> like a dating coach. Yeah. Which a dating coach. That's a good way to put it. Um and they end up falling in love and it's yeah, so cute. It's really cute. The other one that's really cute is the one with Candace Cameron Bure, which that's does not narrow it down at all. No. <laughs> but it's a Mother's Day one where she's already married. Um, just the way you are, I think it's called. Yeah, that one's good. Where I love her married. Christmas detour one too with Paul Green. Yeah. It's funny. Yeah. Um, of course, Aurora Tea Garden. Yes. And Mystery 101. I mystery, love Mystery. Okay, 101. Mystery 101 was the best. I love I that show. <laughs> am angered. That they canceled it. I know. My mom just last night, she found the um person who writes the shows yeah. just came out and told us what happened in <gasps> the last movie. No. So like we have the answer of like we have the answer. Yeah. Okay, so for those who of you who are listening, this is a mystery movie series that Hallmark did called Mystery 101. There's a police detective, is the main guy character, and the main girl character is a literature um professor. professor literally dream job i mean he taught like a crime fiction class like yes. are you me? sign me up sarah it's yeah it's all for you um and so the last movie that they did was let's just say you know jill wagner and christopher palaha they're amazing love yes both. they're both yeah Christians. yeah i love them Christians. together so they're yes awesome. but it had such a cliffhanger ending yeah and then it they did. canceled it because Christopher Palaha and Jill Wagner moved to Great American Channel. Yeah. Which 1000% respect them, yes, them for that. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm going to have to look that up. Yeah. I'll have to find it and send it to you. But That's it was nice to know what happened. I they was didn't like, actually break up. A what? They did it. So you but know I the cliffhanger. She was engaged. Okay. It- I'll just tell you because I mean, we're not getting <laughs> yeah. any more movies. And so it was, it was a dream. So, like, the next movie, you'll see she's, like, sleeping, and she has that dream, and then she wakes up. And mm, they're playing the dream card yes, on us. And they did. And yeah. That made me so mad. I know. I was, yeah, me too. But interesting. Okay, well, good to know it was just a dream. Also, movie writers everywhere don't do cliffhangers unless you are making the next movie. Yeah, well, I feel like... They do cliffhanger endings. Like, I feel like the writers have no say. So, whoever it's makes like, the movie, the... Uh, the channel yeah the channel don't don't do the don't let the writers, if you're the not the writers are good yeah yeah Keep for sure writers. yeah i know i was like how can i jump on this train to like write a movie for like great american channel yes yeah it's so fun i know i we did should a do creative, it i don't know i did a creative writing class in high school yes. i'm sorry i'm just like i'm stealing the show <laughs> the stole the sh- I can't talk. The show is yours to be stolen. Sorry. Um, and I had to like write a script, and it was really fun. It That's was for so a commercial. Cool. I did like oh. a commercial. It was fun. On the episode all about you next time. <laughs> I want to hear oh. more about. I want to hear. You need to bring it. You need I'm to act see if it I can out. Find it. Play all the parts yourself. Oh my! We'll upload it to our YouTube. So speaking of dream jobs, parents, yes. what's your dream job? My... And you have to think like money is no, like you'll start this job and you'll get paid. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> oh, good to know. My dream job is to, my dream job literally is to be an assistant to a pastor. Look at preferably you. Preferably so cool. in a worship department or something worship related. Yeah. Um, I worked in the media department at Bellevue. I worked in the music, the worship department, and then the media department. Um, And I was the assistant to the media pastor. Um, And I love that. That was basically my dream job also. And then now I'm working as a ministry assistant to the lead pastor of this smaller church. Those are all being an assistant to the pastor and getting to work with like in the, within the worship department to some extent is my dream job. And it's your gift too. Because you're very so, organized. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And you're very good at keeping like a schedule and yeah, all that fun jazz. And I like organizing other people <laughs> and telling them what to do. The truth no. <laughs> comes out. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you heard it here first. <laughs> Cozy Conversations podcast with yeah. Sarah with Taryn and Sarah. <laughs> Taryn likes to organize people. 
<laughs> yeah, but um, I will kind of mention with that for anyone out there who's like kind of considering what to do, you know, the Lord has given you gifts and abilities that he has given you they're they're specific to you and your personality and those are not things you should ignore when you're looking yeah. into like what you want to do you know mm -hmm. like definitely take those things into consideration because that can help a lot with finding just kind of what his call for your life is for sure specifically vocationally yeah yeah because that's hard because like I feel like 18 is too young to be choosing a major that I mean yeah. obviously the major you chose was like perfect for what you wanted to go into but yeah. I've seen a lot of students who you know have a hard time choosing a major because they don't mm -hmm. really know what they want to do right because they have maybe because they haven't found their gift yeah or right I don't know but yep I've it's been so, there yeah so it's 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 a tough it thing is. to think through but you can definitely like if you're listening you can definitely ask those around you to see yeah. like what your gifts are and mm -hmm you know, because then that'll help you like point yourself in the right direction. Yeah. I went through a program before I went to school. I was in high school still. And it was like a, it was called navigate, I think. And it was, huh. it, it basically, it was so unique from anything I've ever seen. And it basically mm -hmm. went through and it helped you like find out like what in your life, like what gifts you have. And like, just, it asked you a lot of really like um, introspective questions and you had to answer. And it really helped you like kind of dive into like your personality and just like how what things give you energy like and you know it's not about you but it is about using your gifts and talents and abilities for the yeah. lord and so a lot of times the things that give you energy and like you feel fulfilled when you're doing them like me you know music and like organizing and things like those are things that the lord has given me to use and so yeah. like that was super helpful to like go through you know and like just think through all those different aspects but yeah that's yeah. awesome yeah that's really cool yeah um I did did you finish all of your books tv shows movies you wanted to talk about yes I think so okay I wasn't sure because we kind of went off on a hallmark on tangent. A tangent yeah that's it was kind easy of boring for me this to go week. off of. oh it is such an easy tangent I was just thinking about um the chronicle mysteries I know they only have like three of those. Those were really good because the girl was a podcaster. Yeah. Who was solving like the first episode was cold cases. A yes. cold case. Right. And then she just kind of went off with her podcast. Yeah. In the movie. So. That was cool. I like that. It could too. be us. It could be. Posing <gasps> cold cases conversation. <gasps> <She did. laughs> I feel like we're going to lose like half our audience. Yeah. <laughs> We'll gain a whole new realm of people, though. Yeah. <laughs> um. But yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. That those movies were really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Let's see here. What's your dream vacation? Oh. My dream vacation. I'm trying to. It would probably be going to Hawaii. I am really, I know. We can make this happen. I know. I'm just waiting for when. Because <laughs> my like, aunt is listening right now. Yes. Yes. And she is like, I'm going to come visit you. <laughs> yeah. And she is like, probably screaming, come see me. <laughs> yes. I'm I like, want to oh, go so God. bad. I just, Which, I love going to the beach and you, like, you do. Yeah. Do you, I mean, I don't, you don't, know too much about the separate islands but not tons but not tons. a little do bit you have, yeah based on what you know do you know if you have a preference well and then I'll tell go... you if that preference is correct or not okay <laughs> well I'd want to go see your family on the island they live at yeah, obviously so th their island is the best island um, okay that's the correct answer good job <laughs> you got it but you really have to go to like Oahu too because that's like the it's perfect because it's got like that like not party but like the I don't want to say nightlife but it's got yeah. like um like the stores and like yes. in Honolulu and okay. Waikiki that's what I was which gonna tourists say, like, probably I on the too. other she's probably making fun of the way I pronounced it right now so. <laughs> my apologies yeah. to my fellow Hawaiians but um because it's so nice because you get like all those fancy restaurants yes but then on the north end of the island like the north shore uh -huh. we my parents and I stay in like a little cabin Oh, cabin fun. condo oh I love that right on the beach 
so yeah. good. And then you can drive to where they, I don't know if it was on Oahu or on Hawaii, but you can drive to where they filmed Lost, I think. Oh, cool. And other movies. Need. And yeah, I, I want to go. Kauai is too, but Kauai is like, the Garden Island is what they call it. So it's like the. Really pretty. Very chill vibes. Oh, I love that. And if you go to Kauai, you have to go to where my cousin works. The shave. yeah, the shave ice place. Shave ice, yeah. Yeah, I want to go. <laughs> it's so good, and like yes. the restaurants there, um, they're really good too. So yeah, I want to go. Gonna take you because that's like my favorite. I lo- love like the very peaceful, relaxed, like like that island. And then I would want to go visit the other ones because I love to go like shopping and like have a night out yeah. to like go eat some more fancy and like yeah. you know, like I love having both of those elements on vacation. Like yeah. I just really I really love that. <laughs> and it's so, super easy to like island hop too. I've heard that it is, yeah. Because mm-hmm. cool. my my aunt does that like frequently. She'll like she's a, well, I'll text her and she's like, I'm in Oahu or on Oahu. Nice. Like, oh, man. <laughs> so jealous. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Um, but that's really cool. Yeah. Um, when you go on vacation, is there something in particular? Because I know you mentioned like going to the beach, but is there something you love to like do? I love is I love to um visit the restaurants. Yeah. Like yeah. try all the different places to eat. And yeah. I also love to go to the tourist trap shops. You have to They're go so <laughs> to a luau. Oh yeah. In Hawaii. Uh-huh. I know yep. at the on fun. Oahu they have the Polynesian Cultural Center, I think it's what it's oh, called. Cool. And they'll like do the little dance around the pig that's in the Oh ground. yeah. I wanna go. <laughs> and there's like different foods you can try. Nice. Um all like the typical Hawaiian food. Very cool. Stuff. Which leads us to our cozy question. <laughs> oh yay. Um, is there a food you wanna try that you haven't oh. tried yet? Okay, so there is um I so I follow this um Instagram page that's from New York City. Ooh. Um and it shows you like all these cool different foods they have there. And um I love New York City from cuz I went there in college with um the choir from Liberty and we um went to Carnegie we sang at Carnegie Hall with um phil barfoot's um celebration concerts tour um and that was amazing and so we were there for like it was like a dream weekend it was like i felt like i was in like this amazing dream and then then you came back and almost burnt down the whole entire south tower (laughs) (laughs) yeah there was that i had to throw that out there (laughs) i put a bag of i had a bag of olive garden breadsticks left over and I thought you could just put the bag in the microwave because it's like paper on the outside. On the well, outside. on the outside. The inside is a different story and it's like aluminum or... It's foil. Foil, oh, no. yeah. <laughs> and so it just, I put in the microwave and I was so excited for my breadsticks and it started sparking and popping and blowing up in the microwave. And everyone was on Thanksgiving break. Yeah, I was like, literally this whole building is going to go down with and me. you're going to be <laughs> amongst the ashes. I know. But so you're so yes yeah, so in new york city they have these really cool looking like pastries and they're like these giant like i don't need, i don't know what they're called i'm sorry i'm just gonna describe them <laughs> probably a word i can't pronounce <laughs> but um they're like these big like pastries not like a donut but like they kind of look like a croissant but they're not and then they have like these this like a bunch of filling inside like a frosting and like different like flavors and stuff so whatever those are and whatever they're called I'm going to track it down and find it the next time I'm in New York City these remind me of the food you can get in like Louisiana the pastries beignets is that how you say it oh yeah 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 I don't know if that's how you say it, but I know what you're talking about okay cool yeah clearly we're not cultured enough clearly not (laughs) that's so funny yeah I want to go well, I want to go to New York City too again because it was I just want so much fun yeah we should I've go al- I've always talked about having that dream of going and like staying in like this huge penthouse right on Times Square which is going to cost an oh, arm and a leg for yeah. each person involved right but it would be so worth my- it it would be so worth it I've always told Taryn oh. that I would love to go I don't know why this is like interesting for 
New Year's Eve, but to not be at Times Square, but to be like in a penthouse above, like overlooking Times Square. And you basically just like stay in at home like all day. And you Uh can just have all your food and all your snacks and your friends and your family and everything. And you're just watching everything happen from the outside. So that would be my dream vacation vacation I think so you can't yeah. ask me that next week oh okay I'll ask you something different <laughs> oh, no, that's but I mean, you can but it changes because the, there's like different vacations based on like yeah kind of what mood you're vibes. in honestly yeah yeah <laughs> but there's always the cabin in the middle of yeah nowhere, right with a good mystery book yes when you've had enough of everyone around you that's the vacation that's you the vibe <laughs> yeah yeah well this has been fun I hope yeah. that everyone can kind of see a little bit into a pe- the peak, I can't even talk, of Taryn, who she <laughs> is. Um, get a peek into her life is what I was trying to say <laughs> before that sentence derailed. Um, yeah, you know, we just kind of wanted to use this time to just, you know, another just chill podcast episode. We hope everyone's been enjoying it. Nice. Um, yeah. Thanks, Taryn, for being willing to be put in the hot seat. Yay! You didn't ask. I I was. What did you expect from... me to ask? I don't know, but I just was. Tell us your scared. deepest, darkest fear. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> spiders. <laughs> we all know I mean, it's spiders. There was That's spider an important thing for everyone to room. know about me. Really? Yeah, yeah. And I like went to go spray something, and it fled. It ran. <gasps> it and I was screaming and then I opened my closet door and it was there and I like slammed my foot down and like dragged it the spider <laughs> lost its life um spider zero Sarah one <laughs> but I feel oh like goodness. yeah I'm scared of sharks yeah <laughs> they're scary the too irrational fear <laughs> not if you're at a beach though no no you, you out swimming in the ocean it's a very legitimate fear in a pool I'm like <laughs> <laughs> Taryn, thank you so much for um sharing again today. Looking forward to hearing the questions from you next week. Yes. But <laughs> everyone, stay cozy. Yes. Bye bye. <laughs>